Okay, how's everybody today? Good. Okay, let me just hit that last button. For Facebook Live. Go. All right, so I want to welcome everybody to our Tuesday outreach call. Uh, we are on Facebook Live today, so those of you who are joining us via Facebook, feel free to post any questions that might come out today into the comments. We will be checking them regularly. For those of you that are in with us on Zoom, feel free to uh, raise your hand or ask it in the chat bar. But I want to welcome um, Beth Ann Virgine today from uh, uh, the uh, Yukon uh, Center for Disability. I, did I get it right? I always call it the USED and then I don't really know. It's a Center for Excellence in Disabilities or yeah. say it right for me. Yeah, <laughs> Center on Excellence in Developmental Disabilities. Thank you. Um, otherwise known as a USED at Yukon. So she is here today. She's going to talk to us about how to label emotions and we're still adding people in as they come. Oops, hold on couple more people. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to get started introducing um, Beth Ann. So, Beth Ann, do you want to tell us a little bit about your history and what you do at UConn? So, I have been working at the USED for about seven, almost seven years now. Um, my background is early childhood, and I'm currently the ACT Early Ambassador for Connecticut. Um, so I focus on early childhood development as uh, zero to five. So I do a lot of trainings. Um, my two passions are social emotional development and child development for young children. So I'm happy to be here. Please encourage, ask questions. Um, today we're going to talk about um, uh, emotions, which I'm sure we all have a lot of emotions right now. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I see Mary smiling, everybody shaking their head. Definitely time filled with emotion. No. All right, Beth Ann, if you, when you are ready, you can go ahead and start your PowerPoint. I did mute everybody. If you want to ask questions, um, you feel free to um, mute yourself. We can answer it. Or like I said, you can post them in the chat. Sorry, I had a young child stuff. yelling in the background. <laughs> That's okay. We like that. It makes us all, we all go through it, right? Like all the head shaking. Yep. This is what our, our Tuesday calls are definitely about. We all live in this environment. So well, I'm glad that you guys feel my pain. So yeah, so today we're going to talk about emotional literacy, which is um, a fancy way of saying for labeling emotions. And I think when I thought about topics to present, I thought this was a great topic because we all are so full of emotion. And then we think about young children and how their emotions are right now and how we could have the ability to help them identify them, understand them, and then respond um, to their emotions and to others and understand other people's emotions because I think that's hard. So why is emotional literacy important? We want children to be able to enhance and expand their emotional vocabulary. We want them to learn new words for their feelings and use those words to be able to label how they're feeling and how others are feeling. Um, you can also help them understand that their feelings can always change. So what can we do as adults? Well, we all have crazy feelings right now. We are all overwhelmed. We have so much going on. And so, excuse me for a second. Um, ex us expressing how we're feeling too, I think is truly important. Um, one way to help children learn their emotions is to have us show them our healthy emotions. And whether we're frustrated, we're sad, we're happy, we're excited. Um, so I thought of a good example is that, you know, you may, a parent may say, oh, you know, my mom or my dad or my Nana and grandpa are coming to visit today. I'm so excited. So really pointing out those vocabulary words about how you're feeling helps young children and helps us model them. So labeling children's feelings. So we always want to provide feeling names. Um, I, 
I worked in um, a large school district uh, for quite a long time, and I know I learned many vocabulary words for children's feelings that I probably can't say on this webinar. Um, but we all know children learn different words. Um, they hear specific words. Um, you know, I remember when my son one time tried, he was trying to tell me he was frustrated. So he was frustrated. And I actually didn't understand what he was saying, but he was actually repeating what I was saying that I was frustrated about something. So it's good for us to have good model um, language for young kids. Um, sometimes some kids pick up other language, um, but it's a good model to do. And then also too, we want children to ha show empathy and for other children. So if there is a child that is upset um, because they can't get on a swing um, because another child run, ran in on it, you know, we're, they're showing disappointment. So we say it's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to be frustrated. Um, sometimes instead of using those emotional words, young children will um, throw themselves on the floor or get mad or whine or cry. So instead of those, we try to redirect them and say, I understand that you're mad. I understand that you're frustrated. So ways that we can turn those emotions that there's nonverbal emotions into some words. Um, and then children's feelings, um, vocabularies develops as they get older and as they start understanding um, those true feelings. I think one feeling that can't always be understood is when they're, you know, hungry and angry. What do we call that? Hangry, um, which we see a lot of it. So that is a hard expression, I think, that um, to teach young children. I think as adults, we have those too. So I have a, some couple great videos I want to show you. Um, it's not just identifying emotions, but it's also communicating with children. So I thought these would be good videos to share with you guys today. So let's play this one. I may have to make sure I share my video. Every day I try to some really quality time with Jenny. You know, talking and sharing. Time that we can relax and just really enjoy each other's company. And make a special effort so that it's really Jenny time. She always decides to play. I'm basically just along for the ride. Although I do have to help her out sometimes just to get things started. And who's this? She's a beautiful princess. A princess? Wow. That means she's in charge, huh? Of the whole fairy nation. The buck stops here. <laughs> she's the one we all want to bow down to and try to make happy. Sort of like a CEO. That's it. And she's like a Fairyland CEO. She'll probably need a classic functional organizational structure where each portion of the organization is grouped according to its purpose, which means she'll need a strong financial officer or maybe even a creative director. Oh, and let's not forget about operations, huh? Somebody needs to keep the wheels of Fairyland turning. And who is this? This gives us a chance to just be Dad and Jenny. And she's so creative. <laughs> you just never know what's gonna come out of her mouth. He's from HR. That's right, Jenny. He's head of HR, Human Resources for Fairyland. And how do we know this? No briefcase. Folks from HR are so busy putting out fires, they rarely carry a briefcase. <laughs> Unless it's a board meeting or some client consultation, which I don't think it's the case here, so. Jenny always used to be excited when I played dolls with her. I don't know what happened. Is there anything I can do to get her excited about playtime again? One of the most important components of playing effectively with your child is letting your child take the lead in terms of determining what they're interested in, what they want to do, what is fun for them, um, and not trying to structure the play or direct the play too much. Mm -hmm. Play is the work of children. That's how they're learning and that's how they're developing. So play is extremely important. And interactive play is most important. And the best way to encourage play is to participate in that play. I could tell Jenny wasn't enjoying our playtime like she used to. And I just wanted us to get back to having fun together again. So now I let her lead playtime and I use those opportunities to be supportive and positive. Great job putting your toys away, Jenny. 
What do you want to do now? So if there's a behavior that you want to encourage, you want your child to sit quietly, for example, then when they're sitting quietly, I like how you're sitting quietly. I like how you're doing, um, you know, keeping, keeping your hands to yourself, whatever the activity is. You need to be specific in your praise or else it kind of gets, you know, um, they don't really know what they did well. Good job or, or, you know, I like that. And they don't really know what you're talking about as opposed to being very specific about your praise. Look at that. I love the way you get it inside your arm there. As long as kids are playing in a healthy way, then we really want to let them explore their own world. It's okay to color outside the line. It's okay to um, put the Lego pieces in the wrong spots. Ultimately, you're learning a lot about your child, and your child is learning that you are engaged and want to participate in the things that they like. I'm so happy I've learned this parenting tip. It's like Jenny and I have a whole new relationship. <laughs> And I've also discovered that I can sometimes be a little overbearing, but I've learned my lesson. From now on, I'm all about separating work from home. She's the focus. Also, I've realized I should probably leave all the make-believe stuff up to her, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Wilson, will you please come into my office? Yes, Princess CEO? I'm very impressed with the new organizational structure you've brought to Fairyland. Oh, <laughs> just doing my job, ma'am. Well, it was so good that I'm going to make you into a knight. <laughs> Thank you so much. Say, before you were a princess, were you in HR? I noticed you weren't carrying a briefcase. I share that video it's not necessarily all um, mostly about emotions but it's also about communication um, so when she was you know getting bored with her dad because he kind of took over everything um, she showed that she wasn't very happy with him and that she wanted him to be what she was choosing the play to be but she really was showing some good emotions and he figured out those emotions that she wasn't happy and that how could he shift himself to be better at it. So I just thought that would be a good example of a good communication video. So um, we want uh, children to understand their emotion. Oh, my video, just sorry about that. Um, where you would my screen go, sorry. Um, we want children to understand their emotions by first giving, in, giving their feelings names, and then we want them to encourage them to talk about how they're feeling. Um, for example, a child may say that dad left for work and I know you're sad, um, you want to be around your dad, but giving those emotions to acknowledge why they're upset when dad left for work or mom had to go somewhere. And then if we dive into kind of what's going on right now and we think about, I know for myself, I have one child and so he has been home with us and so he hasn't seen his friends. Um, so a lot of time he has some um, meltdowns and some not the best behavior, but I know it's because he's frustrated that he's been home and he's lonely and he wants everyone just to play with him. So encouraging conversations we've had with him is like, I get it, buddy. We know that you're sad and we know that you're frustrated, um, that you're not seeing your friends. And I think too, you know, we Everyone's like, oh, well, you know, there's, um, they can FaceTime or set up calls. But I think after the first two weeks, he was kind of over that FaceTiming and video chats with everybody. It's exciting for the first period, but then it wasn't so exciting anymore. So um, does anyone here um, want to share? Are you having struggles with um, your kids right now in regards to emotions and them being upset and... Does anyone want to share anything? You can you put can, it in the chat box. You can put it in the chat box or feel free to um, unmute yourself and share if anybody wants to. I know I can say that like yesterday, um, we had a complete meltdown here and uh, we it took us a long time to find a routine after everything that's going on, right? Because change is transition is hard for us. Change is hard. Um, and change the, changed it up a little bit and let him take a break early. And he was really excited, but it didn't go the way we were supposed to. And we just had a complete meltdown, which we hadn't had in a while. And so I think it threw everybody in the house off. 
and everybody's emotions. And believe it or not, I feel like we're only starting to recover from it today, about 24 hours later. Got everything back on track. So, um, you know, it took a while for him to express himself before we could move forward and figure out what he was so upset about. And I think, too, what is hard is, is that their emotions affect us, too. So, you know, when they're having a meltdown or just having a really bad day, it affects our emotions. So it's not like we're walking around the house all happy, um, too. You know, we're feeling those effects and we're feeling frustrated. So that's really, really hard. That too, I think too, uh, you know, cause you said that, but it, it's vice versa too, right? So if we've had a really bad day and because we don't necessarily, um, everybody's work dynamics, well, not everybody, but a lot of people's work dynamics are so different, right? So they're working from home. And if you had a bad day at work, you're not really getting to blow off steam anywhere. Right. So it's, you know, it's, and if you already have social emotional concerns at home, like this is just adding to it and we don't mean right. to, I mean, I know I don't mean to, but it's, it happens. I see it going that way too, from my own right. emotions, spilling into theirs. Anybody yeah. else or anything? Stop, Mary? Yeah, I was like, we, we had a rough day today and it was all because of change and it threw up our whole day. We had a doctor's appointment first thing this morning. We actually had to go to doctors versus being online. And it started off as just walking into the doctor's room and realizing there was no wooden box to play with. And that right there, just over the top. And then he calmed himself down and I thought we were good. We went to check out and there were no stickers at the desk either. So that again, we went back down again and for the rest of the day it's just been it doesn't take much now for him to go over the top because of, we're already at that point <laughs> you know mary you bring up such a great example because it's not just every so you know everything is in our home is the same we're cleaning more um and we're careful about anybody who comes in our house but you're right going out into our environments that we're so used to that we're um simple routine like oh i know i have to go to the doctors well i'm excited because i'm gonna get a sticker there's toys in the room to play with there's toys in the um actual doctors um you know in the exam rooms so all of that has changed too so that is a huge um cause of emotional stress for kids you know well why aren't there stickers well why isn't there this why does that have to change too you know, they see such changes in our house and not going to school and but to add on another change. We see changes in stores and, you know, young kids don't really get that six foot line, you know, taped lines. You know, why do I have to go? Why do I have to wear this mask? Yeah, it just builds up so much um, anxiety. And so it's like, how do you truly, truly express to kids, this is our new norm? And they don't understand that. But that's a great point, Mary. Thank you for sharing. I have Mary's now. Mary's now pointed out to me though that my son points out everything. Every office is by the toy. So, thank you. I now have to find another way to describe this other than the dollhouse place, the book place. That right. didn't think of it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mary. Anybody else want to share anything? about what they're uh, experiencing? Okay. Um, if you don't right now, let's, we can go through a few more slides and then we can have some more conversations. So communicate, this is another great video that I wanna share. Positive communication with our children helps them develop in a healthy way and strengthens our bond with them parents can really kind of tune into what their kids are saying to kind of build those communication skills, help their children build language skills by saying, you know, what are what did you say and repeating back what the kids said and reflecting on that emotion that kids are, are um, expressing. There are four steps for communicating positively with your child. Step one, praise. Use praise to help your child know what you'd like them to do. Be clear and specific with your praise. Instead of, good job, say, good job putting away your toys. Great job putting your toys away, Jenny. 
it's very, very important as a parent to be conscious as much as possible of what your kids are doing, but you're checking in on them enough that there's opportunities to acknowledge what they're doing, that it's good. Step two, imitation. You can copy or imitate the things your child is doing that you want them to keep doing. This shows your child that you are paying attention to them and interested in what they are doing. When copying and imitating, make sure you do the things the way your child does. Do not try to do things better or faster than your child. Then they see that you've recognized that they're doing something that you're also doing. Wow, mommy likes that. Mommy likes to play with my dolls too, so that must be something good that I'm doing. I'm gonna do that again in the future. Step three, description. Describing or talking about what your child is doing while they play shows your child you are noticing their good behavior. You can act like a sportscaster who is telling people what is happening in a game. You are putting the red block on the green block and making a tall tower. Step 4. Active Listening Giving your child your full attention when you are playing and talking with them can help build your relationship. At least once a day, try to really focus on being with your child. Try to decrease distractions like cell phones so you can give her your full attention. One way to actively listen is to talk about what your child is doing or to repeat what your child says. You can also add more detail to encourage them to talk to you more. For example, your child may say, I colored it. But with active listening, you may add to that and say, yes, you colored her dress blue and red. Active listening can also help children name their feelings. For example, if your child is crying and says she's not happy, you may say, you seem unhappy and sad. Playtime is a great time to practice praise, imitation, description, and active listening. You can also use these skills anytime you are with your child at dinner, in the car, and when giving a bath. So I like that video too, when we talk about um, the part about you're feeling um, happy or you're feeling sad. Why are you feeling sad? Why are you feeling unhappy? And having that, listening to everything that your child is talking about and why they're feeling sad. Um, I know sometimes, my child, I'm pretty sure his middle name is Disappointment. I'm not kidding you. Um, there is a disappointment at least 50 times a day. So <clears throat> I try hard to be like, you know, like, oh, Cooper, that is the most crazy thing to be upset about. But then I stop and think like, okay, well, to him, it isn't the craziest thing. Um, you know, it, it is important to him. So I have to recognize that even though he is the king of disappointment, I have to recognize when he's sad and upset. Um, I do think too, there's a lot of great opportunities to teach kids emotions. Um, you know, there's a lot of great books and I'm gonna share a great list of books. If you're trying to teach your children about um, labeling emotions, um, I'm gonna share a list of them. Um, and then there's some songs you can, we can share these slides if anybody's interested. Um, it has great ideas of songs that you can talk about. Um, so that whole song, if you're happy and you know it, you know, you clap your hands, but there's also, you can add in, if you're frustrated and you know it, take a breath. Um, so those different ways too. Um, also, I don't know if you ever heard that, um, there's two ways if I'm frustrated or I'm mad, um, I can take three cheap, deep breaths and let it out or act like I'm blowing out um, a candle or for my birthday, or I'm blowing out, a, you know, blowing the leaves off of a flower. Or I can, if I'm mad, I can crawl into a shell like a turtle and just take um, a minute of quiet time. So here are most um, emotional labels that we want to give kids. We want them to understand it's a, first of all, it's okay to be frustrated if they're trying to color a picture and they're not keeping the crayons in the lines or they're not able to um, color the picture like their friends are. I think a lot of times um, we do know that young children learn from their peers. So if they're seeing that their friend is doing something better, it may be more frustrated. Um, a lot of kids are, you know, show embarrassment or especially now we talk about being lonely, sad, 
I'm mad that we're home, mad that we can't go outside and play, you know, go to the local um, playground. I'm nervous because we don't know what's happening every day. Um, and then happy, loved, scared, and proud. So showing those um, emotional words is a great vocabulary for young children. We want them, you know, instead of throwing a toy across the room, being able to teach them to say, I'm really mad that you're not playing with me, or I'm mad that this toy isn't working, um, instead of launching it across the room, which I see all the time. <laughs> So when we think about young children and how angry some kids can get and they have that impulse because they don't know how to regulate their feelings, it's all about teaching self-regulation. So how can we help them recognize the anger in themselves? Um, so what's making them so frustrated? What's making them so angry? And how can we calm them down? Um, and understanding appropriate ways to express anger. Like the example of, you know, I can't build those Legos or I can't draw that bird. Um, instead, they're throwing crayons across the room or just getting so frustrated. Um, just sitting kids down and just saying, I understand that you're angry or I understand that you're frustrated. Let's talk about and how can we, how can we build those Legos without you getting so frustrated? What is bothering you the most? Um, it does sound simple when we have a child throwing themselves on the kitchen floor or I've had the grocery store. So it sounds so simple. It's these magic words. You just need to sit them down and say, I know you're frustrated today. It's not that easy. I don't think anybody has that easy time, but we want to teach them. So if they are throwing something across the room, well, what is that? Well, it's anger. And so why are we angry? And let's talk about it but there is no magic potion of those impulse behaviors sometimes. It's just young children not knowing what to do with all their um, feelings. But also too, we wanna to validate children's feelings. Um, you know, your child may wake up grumpy, but they don't know why they're grumpy or they don't have to stay grumpy all day. So we can help them learn that they can have more than one feeling about something. So mommy and daddy wake up grumpy sometimes too. They, don't want to go to work. They don't want to be stuck in the house anymore. They want to go out to the grocery store, want to go to the a clothing stores, anywhere. Um, so we all have the same emotions. We just show them differently. So I think my question for everyone here, if you want to share, is um, the key to emotions and behaviors, there's always a trigger. So Behavior is a form of communication. So children have behaviors because they're trying to tell you something. So, and then sometimes there's triggers. So if you know that um, your child loves building Legos and you just walk in the room and say, okay, it's time for dinner, put the Legos away. Well, of course they're gonna have a meltdown because they're in the middle of building Legos and that's what they love and that's what helps them. So if we gave them a warning and said, okay, five more minutes of Legos, um, and then you can, you know, and then you can go back to your Legos after dinner. So there's always one step before that behavior happens. So trying to figure out what triggers um, does help. And then how can we avoid a meltdown? Um, I do know that I could never take my child from the minute I picked him up from childcare to run errands. Um, it was always a disaster. So I had to do those errands before I picked him up because he was hungry. He was like a clock, five o'clock, he had to have dinner. So I always know certain meltdowns when they're gonna happen and I try to avoid them, um, except the ones in the grocery store. <laughs> those were not the fun ones. Um, and I do see more meltdowns now because we're home so much. Um, and I think it's a lot of attention seeking because they, you know, when you've been home for what, 10, 11 weeks, your toys aren't fun anymore. Um, now it's more of wanting attention. And so I'm trying to work or I'm trying to do things around the house. So I have to try to find time where I can give him more attention. It's not that easy though. There's no magic words to that one too. Does anyone have any thoughts about um, your own experiences about triggers and frustrations and meltdowns? Feel free to unmute yourself and share if you want to. I know I can sympathize with the grocery store. Sometimes it's just 
so much easier to like go for me like early in the morning on a weekend when their father's here to be with them <laughs> so that I don't have to go and I know that's horrible because I'm not I'm like not I'm avoiding I'm avoiding the behavior but yes yeah so. I do the same thing too car do you have can you hear me yeah, yeah we can hear you oh, thank okay. you so uh, the first time I've asked a question oh or talk oh, good. <laughs> I actually, hi, I actually work as a parent educator for a preschool in Killingly. Oh. Yeah, at the Goodyear Early Childhood okay. Center. Yeah. Um, so I'm on here for my families and I work with the little, I'm a home visitor. I work with zero to five year olds or, or utero. And I do, when I think I know triggers, you know, um, often it's because they're hungry or tired. So, and you know, the, um, their temperamental traits, if you have the very high energy children, the ones with low energy, you just have to kind of figure out the goodness of fit, what their personality is like so that you can kind of adjust the schedule around how their personality is a bit. And like, um, is it Mayor, uh, about going to the doctor? You could bring your own bag of, of toys and stickers maybe. Incentives work a lot when you go out. Incentives in the grocery store, incentives, you know, if, if you behave in the store, we'll go to the park after. Or just if you can, Put that in your schedule but that seems to help children something to look forward to yeah you're right about um those incentives that really does help you know especially now so i know that you're not going to be able to get a sticker but let's think about something else that we can do after the doctor's appointment right you could or you could have your own little bag of stickers yeah something yeah. similar Exactly. Thank you so much, because when you said it, the little light bulb went off in my head. I was like, check, I'll put in the Aaron stinking putty into my purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, putty's a good one. Well, putty, you got to watch out. They'll get it on the furniture. But, I know. But just, I... Remember that we're, I'm going to use it as an incentive out of the house. Out of the house. <laughs> and if it's right. any consolation, I had three children, and shopping, shopping was the worst. Shopping's the absolute worst. <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're pretty much grown my youngest is 17. so thank you so much anybody else have anything they'd like to share i'm just gonna shake facebook we're good thank you to everybody who's out there on facebook watching with us too so okay. I will share one of my, I think these are great books. Um, if you're trying to teach emotions to kids, um, if you're looking for books for older kids, um, I'm happy to share them with Leona. I can send them to her. But I will tell you my favorite is The Pout Pout Fish. Um, if you've never read it, it's a great book about emotions. Um, I actually uh, sometimes say to my child, um, do you think we need to read The Pout Pout Fish today? <laughs> Um, but Glad Monster, Sad Monster is a really good one. The Grouchy Ladybug, um, and then Happy and Sad and Grouchy and Glad. So those are really, really good books about emotions. Um, I will share uh, before we can, anybody wants to ask questions or talk. So there's a really good website, um, the uh, National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations, and they have great parent resources. And one is what called is a backpack series. And on the backpack series is um, they have uh, schedules, routines, transitions, um, emotions. So this one here um, is how to help your child recognize and understand anger. It's a great resource. I think for Kara, who works in an early childhood program, um, these are great to share with families too. So all you have to do is uh, Google pyramid model and this uh, national center will come up. Um, it's NCPMI. So definitely check them out. They're great for families. And then um, also another great resource is, you know, people are like the CDC, aren't they just focused on disease? Um, they're not. They're also focused on child development, and that's what a lot of the um, Act Early that I talked about um, initiative is around, um, is uh, early intervention for young children. So they also have a lot of great tools for um, positive parenting. Um, there's great videos that you can uh, research too, and they go zero to 18. 
So that's another great resource too. Does anyone have any questions or things that, um, situations you wanna share? I did put the link to um, the Pyramid uh, Series uh, backpack resources in this chat if anybody wants it. And it will also, I'm gonna put it into uh, Facebook in the comments as well if anybody in Facebook wants to check it out. So I do want to add that every child is different. We have typically developing children that have um, not the best self-regulation and being able to express their emotions, you know, and then we have children that have a disability. They may have a speech delay, sensory, uh, are on the spectrum. That's a whole nother range of trying to teach emotions and it's not so easy. Um, a lot of times when, you know, transitions um, cannot be the easiest either and that starts a behavior there too. So we try to be consistent on our routines. There's no perfect recipe for dealing with children's emotions. Um, I know, I will tell you that as a parent myself, and I can have all the education and child development behind me, but that doesn't mean that my child that's like throwing himself on the kitchen floor in the middle of a Zoom meeting, um, I'm able to go, okay, you stop that behavior. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, there is no perfect recipe, but if we teach children how to share their emotions um, and give them more literacy words for them, it does help. Um, and also just that self-regulation, how to calm themselves down, how to find ways. And again, that most important too is the triggers. So, you know, um, him throwing himself on the floor in the middle of a Zoom meeting is because he's trying to get my attention because I've been on a meeting for three hours. So it's not necessarily that it's, you know, him just retaliating to me, but he, it's him trying to get my attention. And I think especially now in this hard time, um, we all have a, we all have the same stress. Um, no one has no perfect thing that's going on in their life right now that just COVID hasn't affected. So, and I think um, I recently read a great article about, we talk about the frontline workers, our heroes, um, and everyone that has been out there working, but we also think about our kids, their heroes, because they have sacrificed not by choice, their friends, going to school, their fun routines, their activities. And so all of that has been taken away. So that would cause a lot of emotions, I would say too. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions? Want to add anything? I want to thank you for being with us today. Um, I, think, I think that having these conversations about emotions and that they're safe to have and recognizing that we all have them not just our children but how it all intermingles with each other as well is so important and it's not a COVID conversation because emotions are something we deal with every day but I think that during this time we're definitely talking about them a lot more or we're looking at them a lot more because we're just experiencing them in different um not different areas of our life, but in we're we're functioning differently, so we're seeing them differently. Right. Watching our kids kind of adjust, or you know, have bad days, or we think we find the key to success, and then it all crumbles. The foundation is the um, the emotional literacy they've had from the beginning, the building blocks, and and starting that when we have those days that fall apart, that we can stop and we can go back and we can talk about it and we can put words to it. So I think it's great for all of us to understand. Right, and putting words to it is so important. And you know what? Not every day is gonna be a great day and we're all gonna struggle, um, but really coming together and, and your child seeing that you get frustrated too and that you are that model of showing expressions and using your words too helps them, it gives them a safe uh, security too. That, oh, my mom is upset too. She's not always the happy one. But sometimes I think that's great when they see that because yeah. they understand it's it's part of it. Or, you know, um, or mom's always in a bad mood, which could be my case right now, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, 
my older ones, you know, definitely are on the older side of cars and our youngest is 17. Well, my oldest is there, so doesn't like me a lot of days. So we have, we, we still, even at that age, are talking about emotions and, you know, having bad days or needing time or, and I, I just feel like I'm always trying right now. One of us is having that, that struggle. I have three boys and I, I you know, I, I apologize for those of you that are new to the call for not introducing myself when I was started. I was just so excited to have Beth Ann with us today. Um, so those who don't know me, my name is Leona Domchek and I am a parent consultant with CPAC. So I'm really happy that everyone joined us today, Beth Ann, especially for you for coming out. And I hope that we can continue, have you back again, continue the conversation. Yes. Um, I think I have a lot of great topics to share and I'm, I love connecting with families and giving as many resources as I can. It's so important. So, you know, it there's is. And always all of one. your slides will be available. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you, but oh, you no, said, that's okay. you said always... resources and I got excited. I want everyone to know that these slides are going to be available. Um, they, the video on Facebook live and then the YouTube, um, this has been recorded. So the YouTube clip will be put up and then remember, uh, the specific to the resource, um, backpack series. I did put it in the comment and the chats for families to check out. Yes, and my dog, my child yelling that the dog peed in the house. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just love our guests when we can all just be completely real with each other. This is life now. And I, you know, someone said something about the new normal in it. And the reality is <clears throat> part of it's the new normal. The new normal is letting us in. The new yeah. normal is not everything that we go through, especially parents with children, especially of those with disabilities. Carl, yeah, thank I mean, you so much and any other providers that are on with us. We really appreciate yeah. you joining. We hope you can use your resources with your families. We encourage your families to attend um, and check out some of our other programs. Beth Ann was with us last night for our Family Connections, which is for our zero to eight crowd, zero to five crowd. Um, and we talked, <clears throat> um, so car, some of your families would fit perfectly in there and meet with other families as well. I just want to remind everybody that Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12, no, not 12 o'clock, one o'clock is our Spanish outreach support calls. Our English support call will be Thursday at 3 p.m. And this week, our topic is up to you. So whatever is the hot topic of the week, maybe it's ESY, which we had uh, talked about in depth last time, but now that districts are reaching out, that might be the one that we're talking about, but the topic's up to you. Lisa and I will be there. And tomorrow at four o'clock, Beth Ann is returning this topic, if you wanna hear it again in Spanish, uh, it will be there for our Spanish families to attend um, at four o'clock. Otherwise, if there's no more questions, I'm gonna thank everybody once again, Beth Ann, especially you for joining us. Uh, any questions, anybody? I'm just going to check Facebook one more time because I really hate to miss anybody. Um, we look good. Okay. Thank you guys so much. And I hope to thank see you, you everyone. Our really Bye. soon. It was nice to see, meet you all. You too. <laughs>